praise the name of the Lord for the lovely hymns that we've sung this morning. And I'm just so grateful that once again we can say yes, we are entering into the Christmas season. And yes, this is the time of that holy birth. And yes, this is the time when we we just remember and, and draw to remembrance what our God has done. He sent a holy child into this world. And that child's name was to be called Jesus. And we often, myself included, I'm sure we all do it, just imagine the nativity, we imagine the beautiful but lowly stable, we imagine those gathered round, the three kings, the shepherds, the flocks of sheep, the cows lowing in the stable, and we imagine that scene that we call the nativity and its beauty, and we think about Bethlehem all those years ago. And, and what it must have been like. But I want to look at the portion of scripture that was read for us, thank you very much. I, will, I want to look at that portion of scripture, those two portions of scripture. I'm just going to look at a few sections of um, that piece taken from Luke chapter 1. We had read for us verses 26 to 38 and then verses 46 to 49. <coughs> And there we see a very special person. We encounter the person of Mary and the part she played in that, that whole nativity scene. And when we encounter Mary, we can be forgiven for um, seeing her as somewhat insignificant as, as the, the mother of, of Jesus, she was granted this, this beautiful, beautiful gift to be his earthly mother. But what we perhaps tend to forget is that she was on a special assignment for God. She was given the highest task, the most holy order, and that was to carry the Holy Child and bring him into this world. She was on assignment for God himself. And we're told in, in scripture that she was highly favoured among women. Hail, verse 28, hail. Thou that art highly favoured and blessed art thou among women. It's a beautiful, beautiful greeting. But it requires much more than just um, a beautiful nativity scene. Mary was greeted by one of the highest angels, the angel Gabriel. And when that salutation came, she was somewhat troubled. She says in the very next verse, what manner of salutation this should be, that it should come unto her. And you know, in those times when we are troubled, when we are perplexed, when we are unsure, unsettled in heart, we can throw ourselves off track we can move away, as it were, from the assignment unwittingly, unknowingly, move away or step away from the assignment. But Mary knew God. She, though she was a young girl, had a relationship with God and she was specially chosen. She trusted the Lord. And she knew that this was no ordinary greeting. This was a special encounter. And though she was troubled, 
though she was perplexed and settled in her heart, she remained steadfast and she was obedient and she listened. She listened to what she was about to be told. She listened because she knew above all else that it was God that was speaking. This had come from the throne of grace. And she listened because as she had that visitation, I believe she knew momentarily that she would be set apart from the women of the village because her life was going to take a whole new direction. And in some respects she was completely taken out of her comfort zone because it meant that in stepping out for God she was risking everything that that concerned her life. She was betrothed to be married to Joseph. And it's true here in the story of Mary and Joseph. They were ordinary people. Ordinary people who were set apart to take on the assignment of bringing up the Holy Child. Because God, he works that way. His favour applies to all. His favour applies to you. His favour applies to me. His favour even applies to those who don't fully know him and may not even be fully serving him. Because God can change anybody's life. When we're called On assignment, we need to remember it's a calling for the kingdom of God. We're called on assignment to seek out the lost, to seek out the downcast, the lonely, to seek out those who need the Lord but don't know that they actually need the Lord. And it's in this season, it's in this season that it really does become more and more apparent to uh, Christians and non-Christians that God has spoken about more, particularly in the Christmas season. We speak about the nativity, we speak about his son coming to earth. And so if that be the case, then we, as God's people, should be more alert. We should be more in tune. We should be more in step with our personal assignment for God. Because in truth, we are already on assignment. Amen? We are already on assignment to bring the good news of the kingdom of heaven. And if we are already on assignment, we should be in communication with our Lord regularly daily, in prayer, as we go about our everyday lives, in conversation with other people. We should be mindful that the Lord is always talking to us because we are already on assignment. We are already called to do His work. There are so many lost in this world. There are so many that are in need of God. And unless I tell them about the Lord and you tell them about the Lord and those of us who profess to be Christians tell this world about the greatness of God they will be forever lost. I pray that we understand a little bit more about the reason for the season and the power of the Holy Child coming into this world. It's been on my mind just recently that indeed the world is broken. The world is just that bit more than just damaged. The world is broken and lives are broken. Young lives are lost. 
for no reason. Sadly, we hear of tragic deaths, deliberate and accidental. We hear of both elderly and young youth losing their lives. We hear of people living a desperate lifestyle. And only God can change. Only God can bring the change. And so I urge you, as I urge and prayerfully um, speak to myself in this season, that we have to, with a purpose of heart, step out and speak in this time of brokenness. Mary probably thought the lowly, humble servant that she was, that why would the Lord call upon her? And we, when we look at her, her life, we look at it as an exceptional life, um, a life of beauty and a life of privilege. But really, her life teaches us that we can walk the very same path. We can do, if you like, the very same thing. Different assignment, I grant you. But we must look at her life as just a framework, a pattern for us today, despite our lives, despite our shortcomings, our difficulties, our frailties. We can look at her life as a framework and as a pattern. And we too can magnify the Lord and rejoice in God our Saviour. Because when the Lord speaks to us and says, you are on mission for me, I have an assignment for you. We need to be ready. We need to be um, we need to be mindful that we should be obedient to every word. We need to submit and we need to have courage. We must avail ourselves to the almighty power of God and be ready to take on this assignment knowing that really all we need is the Holy Ghost power. Pray for an infilling of the Holy Ghost power and we'll accomplish that assignment. We will be successful for God. We will see the assignment through and will not fail because God doesn't want us to fail and the only person we need on our side is God himself. So, with that divine intervention from the Lord as Mary had in her life, be mindful be confident and be strong and purpose in heart that whatever the assignment might be, whether it's a collective assignment or a personal assignment, we cannot fail. The assignment comes from the Holy One and we cannot fail. We're on, we're on assignment here at the Pilgrim Church. We have a vision. The Lord has set a vision before us. That's a collective assignment. And we are working together on that assignment to accomplish every part of the vision. But as we see the close of 2022 and as we now look to 2023, be mindful that we will be called. You will be called. I will be called and we may be asked to take on a personal assignment. In Matthew 6 and verse 33 we're told but seek, ye the, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, seek God's will for your life and everything else will be added on. 
His name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.